Hello there. Well, greetings and hello there uh, to one and all of my Star Wars children out there. It's me, your Star Wars dad, here with another dad talk. Today we're talking to Thorn, and I should have, is it Thorn or Thorny, or how do you pronounce it? It's Thorn. Okay. Thorn 007. Gotcha. Yeah, and I remember when you first came onto YouTube, it was Thorn 007, and you switched over to Thorn, but give me the, give me the history behind that name. Well, yeah, um, I'm a, a big gamer, and so Thorn actually came from way back in the day when I used to play Dungeons & Dragons as a kid. I had a, a character named Rosenthorn, and Thorn just always stuck. And the 007 is because um, I love James Bond, and I was also huge into the Nintendo 64 GoldenEye, right. James Bond GoldenEye. Um, I actually played in tournaments and won, in, won tournaments in that game. So, um, so Thorn 007 just kind of stuck with me. Wow. So that the GoldenEye is cr really credited with being the first – uh, really big first-person shooter game to to exist, and that you were a turn, you were a you're a pro at that, man. I was, <laughs> I was a pro at that. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, Dungeons, that was a long time ago. yeah, it was a long time ago. So, <laughs> did you see the new Dungeons and Dragons movie? I have not yet. I've heard all about it. Um, I'm actually pretty excited to see it. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm uh, kind of looking forward to that. So I, I won't give any spoilers. I. I I think I'm. Everybody loves it, and I thought it was okay. Um, I you remember the old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon from the '80s. I don't know if you're if you're of an age to remember that. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm an '80s guy. I was born in '77. So. Okay. Well, you're, yeah, you're my little brother's age. So I I remember that show. There was like this little dungeon master who was kind of like Yoda. He was like a little tiny guy with a white beard, and he would just show up and say, you know, choose from these four chests or something like that, right? <laughs> And, I do remember that. Yeah, and to me, that's the that's the one defining characteristic of a Dungeons and of Dungeons and Dragons. Like, you know, you can talk about bards and dragons, and you can have you know mazes you're going through, but the dungeon master is the one thing that sets it aside from a lot of other fantasy stuff. And there's no dungeon master in the movie. And I'm a, maybe I'm being a snob, but that okay. bothered me. Huh. Okay, well, that's something I'll have to look out for. That's yeah. interesting. Okay. Let me know if I'm just being a snob about that or if it would... Everybody's a snob about something, so there's my one thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, well, let's talk about your roster here. So um, so you got Sith Eternal, and you're at 5 million, and you've got, kind of got all of the, uh, all of the um, uh, what do we call them, the core teams farm. So take me along your farming journey a little bit. Okay, well, I have um, the, the two core teams that I don't have that I know you, you like to to get on to people about. I don't have the, either of the Revens. Um, and it's just because my journey never took me that way. Um, I've got, you know, SEE, I got the executor. Um, and I'm one of those people that when I go for something, I go really hard at it. So when I got executor, I got a seven star on day one. And I think like three days after that, I R9 to Piet. Um, I just, uh, I just got gas a couple of days. Well, a couple, I'm sorry uh was it last week it was no it was uh the week before last and two days after gas i had it seven starred already um so i i'm I, i'm one of those people that i'm i'm very very laser focused on what i do um let's see my first big accomplishment i think was uh cls um cls was way before see but right after cls um was uh see and i i think my first my first relic was actually Geon Ocean Spy. Okay. And then I got all my geos up to relic. Um, I, I'm I'm a big I'm a big geo guy. I really love my geos. A lot of people that say they you know just get them to G12. They don't really do anything. Well, my geos really really helped keep me in the top of my fleet shard for a long time. Um, even when executors came out, I was beating the executors with my, with my malevolence. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, until I got my own executor, but, um, I really love my geos. They do a heck of a lot. Actually, they beat bounty hunters. Um, I've never come across a bounty hunter squad, no matter how high relic they are that I can't beat with them. I beat Revan's with them. Uh, Jedi, not Revan, not, not Darth Revan. Right. But, 
uh, Jenna Knight Revan, um, they, they uh, first order, uh, besides when you stick SLKR in there, there's no S, there's no first order squad that I can't beat with them. Um, even uh, with the uh, TIE pilot Omicron, I still, I walk all over them with my Geos. Yeah. So it's just, you know, yeah, I really those, love them. <laughs> for those who kind of poo poo on the Geos and say that they're, you know, you, they fade or that you don't use them late game, I, I always try to point out, you know, they're they're a really good offensive team. You know, it's not like it's it, it, and they're not like top tier or anything, but it's not like their offensive effectiveness fades in the game. You can always use them somewhere in Grand Arena, maybe not at the Kyber One level, but most of us aren't there. You know, so you, and now now with that Poggle Omicron, man, you throw those things on defense, you're probably getting holds in uh, TW too. Man, it's it's nuts. That Poggle Omicron is a lot better than I think people were giving it credit for right off the bat. Yeah. A lot of people were a little uh, iffy about it. I, I think uh, I was the f as soon as it came out. I think I stuck it on, and uh, and yeah, a way that squad went in TW, it was yep. it was pretty good. I want to pay you one compliment here. You said you didn't really farm the Revens, and and that's fine. You know what what and your your roster isn't one I really have a problem with. It's it's the rosters where somebody went to the trouble of farming the Revens, and then didn't relic up the teams. You know, like they're sitting there with a Darth Revan. And and a Jedinet Revan, and they got them. They're sitting there at like gear eleven, gear twelve, and then their Jolie is at gear nine, and they're bat. You know, it's right. like, why did you spend all this time in your life to farm these guys, and then you're just not even doing anything? That's really what I what I would uh, object to was what I should say. Well, it, it's funny you should say that because now I'm kicking myself for at least not getting Jedinet Revan because. As soon as I got gas, I had this whole year mapped out, and even my guild, like I talked to my guild about, it, I knew exactly um, what I wanted to do. Um, my my whole plan for this year was going for gas. Then sometime over the summer, I was going to finish up my SLKR run, and then I'm actually very close to Jedi Master Kenobi. Um, I have like zero shard farming for any of his required tunes for Jedi Master Kenobi, so. Except for Cat, but I was going to actually spend crystals um, for each of the uh, Proving Grounds to get Cat before I got Kenobi. And so I was going to have everything all set and ready to go. And the Crate Dragon raid came along. Yeah. And now I'm caught a little flat-footed. So now I am going back and I am trying to work on some squads to at least get my foot in the door with the raid. I am miles away from Tuscans. I am miles away from Jabba. So what I'm actually going for is kind of the low-hanging fruit, if you will. So I'm going right now for Jedi Knight Revan. You could actually, if you look them up, you'll actually see where I kind of started breaking ground on them. Um, and I'm also going for my Jawas. So just, uh, and, I, and I have Mandos ready, except for Maul. So I'm actually also working on Bo-Katan so I can have a full squad of Mandos to throw at it also. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. So SLKR got pushed back probably at least a good couple of months now. Um, so once I get, once I get my foot in the door and feel comfortable with the crate dragon raid, then I'll be back on SLKR. Nice. Yeah. And you can't see it, but what, when you started saying the one thing I regret with the older public, I started looking at your job was I started looking at all those things. Cause that's where we're all, <laughs> I'm kind of flat footed on my two accounts too. I'm trying to catch up a little bit, but you know, we'll all get caught up, and by the time we get caught up, they'll change it and, and uh, bring out another raid and do something else with it. So that's what that's how that's gonna work. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. So and, what, and I gotta say, congratulations on uh, Jedi Master Kenobi, by the way. I, you know what, uh, I am so excited for him, and obviously I worked really hard, and now I'm working on getting his ultimate done. And as soon as his ultimate's done, I think Grand Arena is gonna change for me pretty significantly. I've been, I've been throwing out cheese Grand Arena defenses for a long time, and I think once I get him. I may be able to throw a couple of Galactic Legends on defense and uh, and yeah. compete and get myself up to Kyber. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's funny with with GAC. We talk about GAC, and you know, I'm in I'm in a Rhodium two right now. And this last GAC, I went three and zero, oh, and in the event total, I went uh, seven and two. So I had two losses in the whole event. And you know. I'm kind of like you, Nooch, and, I, and I'm going against all these rosters that are six, seven, eight million. My last, the last guy I beat was uh, eight million, and he had three GLs. And I have absolutely no idea why he didn't put he didn't put any GLs on defense, yeah. and I just walked all over him. And I think 
what happens is they see these lower accounts and they think, you know, I'll just walk all over you. And I think the the issue there is, you know, if if you if I am in a rhodium two and I see somebody up there that's you know lesser GP than me, that's the guy I'm going to be worried about because you know, yeah, that guy probably knows what he's doing to get to the level where I'm, I'm at with less GP than I have. So. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point, and, and I, I think probably what people are doing at that at that level is they've got their set defense. They don't really want to micromanage each round of grain drain. They put a defense out, and that's what they put out. And and they're not, and, and I I can relate to that because I don't really I don't really micromanage my grand my grand So I, I kind of get that. Um, but yeah, once I get now that, once I get Jedi Master Kenobi's ultimate, I'm going to micromanage a little bit more and and start looking for places I can put two GLs on the front line. So it's going to yeah. change things. So, um, how long have you been playing? A, a, a little over a couple of years now, or? Yeah, actually, I started uh, December of 2020. Okay. So, so that... yeah, just what two years, four months, I think. Yeah, that's so. You started your account the exact same time I started my my uh, current primary free to play account. Yeah. So this looks like a yep. free to play account for you too. Um, it was probably right up until I, well, the day I hit 2 million actually is the day it came off of a free to play. I, the day it hit 2 million, I remember this. Um, it was during the Thanksgiving time. I don't remember the exact day, but it was, um, when the hyperdrive bundle first went on sale for 50% off mm -hmm. and I hit 2 million. I said, you know what? I'm going to reward myself with this hyperdrive bundle. And um, the day I got that, actually, in Facebook, I um, I have a uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes uh, in in uh, in Facebook. There's a group out there for that, and uh, so I, I remember I actually made a comment that day or a post that day. Three things happened to me that day, where I hit two million, I got CLS, and I got the hyperdrive bundle all in one day. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was, uh, oh, what was, that was, what, maybe a year and a half? Well, yeah, well it was probably it was 2021, I would guess, when you hit 2 million, I, yeah. mean, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. That's awesome. That, that's about right. Um, all right. So here's my final little question here. And, uh, and well, I got a couple questions, but mainly tell me about your Star Wars story. When did you start watching Star Wars? You said you were born in 77. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're like me wow. and my brother, you're just an OT guy, but get, give me your Star Wars story. All right, so when I was six years old, I believe, um, my mom took me to go see Return of the Jedi in theaters, and that was actually the very first movie that I think I've ever saw in the theaters um, that I could remember. I mean, maybe my mom and dad took me in it, but I don't remember that. But the first movie that I actually remember was Return of the Jedi. And I was hooked. I mean, absolutely hooked. I mean, I, I love my Ewoks. I know everybody hates Ewoks. I love Ewoks, and eventually they're going to be a passion project of mine. Um, also, a huge Night Sister fan, which eventually they're going to be a passion project of mine. But, um, but yes, I'm started off with Return of the Jedi, and I never looked back. And I actually had the privilege of being able to see all the originals in theaters and like when they every once in a while when i lived in new york um they would come out on saturday matinees and stuff like that so i would go to the saturday matinees and i would actually be able to see the the originals um in the movie theaters um and i was hooked and still to this day i still have um quite a decent star wars collection um, original figures. Um, I still have an original uh, Darth Vader. I, I got all sorts of stuff like that. And actually, um, <laughs> my wife and I, we owned a collectibles shop. And because of my habit, <laughs> I'll call it a habit, um, it pretty much turned into a Star Wars shop. Star, Star Wars really took over the whole shop. And um, eventually, it just became a Star Wars collectible shop. Um, and uh, unfortunately, sadly, it, I think it was uh, 2010, the economy took a really big hit. Yep. And, um, and I lost my job, and I wound up having to sell like three quarters of my collection. 
and, and that killed me. But yeah. um, that still hurts. But I still got a lot of good stuff. I still got things that you know that I really cherish. Um, I have uh, oh, let's see. I have uh, a George Lucas pilot. I have the original George Lucas pilot. I got all sorts of cool stuff. But um, yeah. I, I so my love for Star Wars has never gone away. What is a George Lucas pilot? I don't know what that is. Oh, he, um, okay, so one of the Comic-Cons, they actually came out with a George Lucas Star Wars figure, and it was a pilot, and it's incredibly rare, um, and I actually have it. <laughs> um, one of these days, um, it's actually, uh, let's see, it's... It's in one of my boxes, actually, in the basement. I never was completely able to unpack it. We just got a, a house a few years ago, and, you know, some sometimes things just go in boxes and stuff. But So all, all my good Star Wars collectibles are in, like, secured boxes. Um, so maybe one day I'll, I'll drag it out and take some pictures of it and send it to you so you can see what it is. That's not – I'm actually looking on, at it on the Internet right now, and that's really cool. They also show yeah. down here that they've got him as a stormtrooper. They like, do. Young and yep. old. He's like black when he has a black beard, and then when he has a gray beard in a stormtrooper costume. And then That's correct. in that costume he was wearing, I think it was Revenge of the Sith when he dressed up with his daughter. Would that be is that the movie it was? I I think so. And I also had uh you look this up too. It's a really neat story behind it. I had uh, an R two K T figure and that was um the 501st Legion, uh, they're basically a, a large Star Wars cosplay group, and they go out and they do all, all sorts of work. Um, I don't know the – I used to know the full story, but it's been years. Um, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was – it stemmed from a little girl. Her name was Katie, and I believe she passed of cancer. And the uh, 501st Legion came out with uh, an R2 droid just for her. And this was while she was alive. Um, and they called it the R2KT unit. And, and I actually uh, I actually have one of those. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's really awesome. Um, all right. Well, you know what? I'm really glad Thorme got together for this. This is a great discussion. And uh, I think for me, the biggest takeaway is that you are we are not alone uh, in not being ready for the crate Dragon wave, right? A bunch of us are not ready for that. But right. I, I love your personal stories there and... <laughs> And your figures. Um, do you have any one piece of advice you would pass on to our audience here about uh, about the game or about anything in general before we head out? I do. Uh, stay focused. Focus, 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 and always be modding. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to argue with either one of those things. The, the three F's, fun, farming, and focus, or fun, finish your That's farming right. and focus. And then, uh, yeah, never stop modding, man. I, I, I come across so many accounts with... with with you know you've seen it it's rough the mods are rough but it, it is what it is so two years two years i've been playing this game and i my mod score in c3 people was over 400 and my my mod score in uh i can't remember the other bot but it's the one my build really goes by is 3.81 right now and that's two years of gameplay so i i, I mod pretty hard yep i really yep. try try to keep up with it well, it does show, man. So, uh, hey, Thorne, I really appreciate you joining us today for a dad talk. Thanks for coming by. I had a great time, man. Thank you so much for having me. All right, no problem. Hey, everybody, hope you enjoyed this, too. Let me know in the comments, and uh, have a great day. Enjoy the people you love. I will talk to you soon. And always, of course, remember, Nooch too good.